For more on this, I do want to bring in my panel that's been patiently waiting and listening as well. Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall is here with me in our New York studio. And Evan Zickfried, author of the book GOP GPS. Guys, a lot to start with, but I think you, you really heard the, the mainstream, the liberal press in particular, go after him on the issue of voter fraud. Those three to five million illegal votes, Sean Spicer saying again and again, that's the data he saw, that's the data he believes. Leslie, he is not backing down. Those reporters want an investigation. You think they're going to get it? I don't think they're going to get it, but I think it's right that they press him on this because, you know, one, one of the things that we have heard complaints about is fake news. We've also heard that reporters are not holding not only the president in this administration, but anybody out there holding a press conference, Sean Spicer as well, accountable for um, items that they are claiming to be factual. And when somebody says, look, the president believes this to be true, my eight and nine year olds believe in a guy in a red suit lives in the North Pole. When he says that he has the data based on the data he saw, what is that data? Well, and a transparent pregnancy, it's uh, pregnancy transparent. <laughs> Freudian slip Tra Yes, transparent, but, transparent administration. You need to provide that to the American people. It's day two, you can though. even tweet it. But Leslie, it's day two. Oh, that's I, you have to give Sean Spicer credit for saying he it's knew. our second day. But we he will, knew they we were going to ask there. this. He knew at least one person. Well, would ask I think this. six of them asked it. What do you say to that issue well, in particular? Because this again shows that animosity that still was picked up today between some members of the White House press corps. First of all, I'm upset at Spicer. Leslie for bursting my bubble about Santa Claus. I didn't know it was real. <laughs> But in all seriousness, the White House recognizes the press are never going to be on their side. And it's going to be a lot of thrusting, and Sean Spicer is going to have to parry. He did parry and point out that it was asked and answered when President Trump made this claim months ago, or right after the election, and we went over it. Now they're just rehashing old claims that President Trump has made. So when Sean Spicer comes out and he focuses on how we need to focus on making, creating jobs, energy independence, and results for Americans. That's what they really care about. And I don't think they really care about Donald Trump's I didn't hear one reporter ask, but the, the headline of, the, of today's uh, conference was February 28th, he will address a joint session of Congress. Pretty big news, not one follow-up on that. Let's go right into voter fraud. And also, they really went after him on the issue of the Keystone and the Dakota pipelines. Will, will he, you know, protect reporters' rights out there? Fair question. Will he, will he you know, support... Uh, uh, businesses. Well, what happens when protests start? A lot of these you can't answer in a press conference. Leslie, why do reporters seem to go after the same line of questioning when, frankly, there is no answer to these questions yet? I would imagine because of some of the rhetoric with, you know, um, oh, you know, you don't want to get on the wrong side. You don't want to say bad things about the administration. Our feelings are hurt because somebody who's a reporter said something bad. Because I think that the press feels that uh, the First Amendment may be infringed upon with their freedoms to cover things. Um, and quite frankly, so it's almost it, about them in a way. It, but it is especially <laughs> about them. And that's that's uh, that's the beginning of the freedom of this country and what sets the United States apart from every other country in the world, in my opinion, not just our Constitution, but specifically that First Amendment. Now, with regard to the pipeline, something I'm surprised nobody asked was, how do you account to the people who were against TPP and voted for the president because he was against TPP? And a majority of those people are also against this pipeline. How do you respond to that? Because the pipeline was a big part of the story today. And again, it's a big part of the market story today. I think people want or people like the idea of free trade, but they like the idea of fair free trade. And that's why they were against TPP, because it didn't benefit Americans themselves. They weren't seeing the benefits in their pocketbooks. We are actually seeing factories closing in the Rust Belt. Whereas with energy independence from the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Keystone Pipelines, we get to see Americans get shovel-ready jobs, and it's going to absolutely trickle down and impact the economy as a whole. It is a fair deal that was put up by extreme far-left Democrats, or opposed by extreme far-left Democrats. You know, Leslie, really quick, there's something else that foreign policy came up, several issues besides St. Patrick's Day, which I found entertaining as well, was the issue of the Palestinian Authority. Really quick, Palestinians, Israel, that money that went to uh, the Palestinians, do they, do they try to claw that back, do you think? Um, I think that they may try, but at the same time, you you know, you have the support from this president right. and this administration to the settlements being built, which I think is quite frankly going to be a powder keg Leslie in the future. Leslie and Evan, thank you for standing thank you. by.